Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you how Colin Kaepernick might have just found a real path back to the NFL. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you why I have reason to believe LeBron James might not end up on any team next year. Speak for yourself mm. starts now. Can't wait to hear this. Can't you, wait to hear Michael this. Michael Jordan left in his prime for minor league baseball. That All was right. crazy. Yeah, Hello yeah, and welcome. Yeah, We're joined today by NBA champion Dante Jones and the founder of the big league, Jason McIntyre. Let's start in Philadelphia, where the 76ers general manager, Brian Colangelo, has some explaining to do after the ringer dropped a shocking story that's been months in the making, accusing Colangelo of using burner accounts to Twitter vent his anger at just about everyone, including his own players, taking Joel Embiid to task for his ego and blaming Markel Fultz's mentor for ruining his shot, among other things. Colangelo also allegedly used the platform to say nice things about himself as well as attack former Sixers general manager Sam Hinkie and current Raptors GM Masai Ujiri. The team is investigating the allegations, which Colangelo has uh, denied, saying, quote, like many of my colleagues in sports, I have used social media as a means to keep up with the news. While I have never posted anything whatsoever on social media, I have used at Phila123456 seven Twitter account referenced in the story to monitor our industry and other current events. The storyline is disturbing to me on many levels as I am not familiar with any of the other accounts that have been brought to my attention, nor do I know who is behind them or what their motives may be in using them. All right, Calhurt, should the Sixers fire Colangelo? Well, if you read the story, it looks like it's him. So based on that, I'd move off Brian Colangelo. It looks juvenile. It looks petty. It looks unstable. This is not what grown-ups do. Twitter's a loaded gun, okay? And we, we judge people based on how they use the loaded gun. This is crazy. This is immature. This is the face of my franchise. LeBron's available on the free agent market. What's LeBron think of this? What do stars think of this? It comes across as is unstable, doesn't it? Face of the franchise is Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, but you're right in terms of impact it could have on other free agents or, or whatever, just the perception of him around the league. I don't think it's a fireable offense, and I say that because I think we're only scratching the surface of the kind of manipulation and fraudulent behavior that's going on with social media. Today we read this story and go, oh my God, I can't believe it. If we ever get to what's really going on in social media, this is a misdemeanor at best. And so I wouldn't fire him over this. What's going to get him fired, though, is I think when he gets caught in a lie. I've, I've got nothing to do with these other accounts. When they went in the story, and I've beautifully written in a uh, uh, great piece of journalism here by The Ringer and Ben Dietrich, but the smoking gun to me is there were three other, they asked him about two accounts, there were three other they held back and they all went dark within hours of the ringer calling and, and questioning about him. So I do think he has some connection to them. And so I think the cover-up will cost him more so than the crimes. Uh, this, is a, this is different, and it was shocking this morning when I read this and I read that article, which was beautifully written. Um, but as the leader of the franchise and the one responsible for decisions and, had, and the gatekeeper of a lot of secrets and a lot of information for your franchise, the perception is bad. And there's too many facts that lead to this being him and looks like it's being him. And it's just, it's too much going on for an organization that's up, trending, on the, uh, trending upwards and is in a good place right now. I think this is, this is if it's found out to be him, it's a fireable offense. And you move on and you get a leader that that guys can trust in free agency and they can look to and say, you know what, they're going to take our franchise in, in the right direction. It's going to be a true leader rather than just be caught up in social media and caught up in, in minor games that, that, are, that are being played. The, the point that's interesting is even if it's not him, then it's somebody that he's been feeding information to for a while, right? He's been telling them about player injuries and potential trades and taking shots at players. This is almost LeVar Lonzo-ish. Some of the stuff LeVar Ball says, wow, does Lonzo really think that? Who, whoever's putting these tweets out there, you got to look back at Coangelo and be like, geez, 
he must think some of this stuff. So I, I would side with you, Cowherd. I think you've got to get rid of him. I think it's got to be quick. Like you said, uh, Dante, this is a pivotal summer for the franchise. You're looking at potentially adding LeBron, maybe Kawhi Leonard's out there. You could be looking at a potential dynasty, and everybody looks at this and be like, do I want to get near that mess? That's just too toxic of a situation. Everybody loves this process, but they've whiffed on yeah. <laughs> Okafor, Nerlens Noel, Markel Fultz could be a whiff. We have a rebuilding process in Boston. Never whiffed in a draft pick. Their GM doesn't have burner accounts. <laughs> they have the that better, we know of. That we they've, know of. They've got the better coach. At what I think, when you juxtapose the Sixers, who everybody's fallen in love with, it's analytical. It's, and then you look at the Celtics rebuild, which has been quiet and cerebral. It, it makes me think, once again, the process has a catchy nickname, but it's got all sorts of holes in it. I agree with you there. I, I'll just say again, Colangelo, clumsy, looks foolish, his way of going about manipulating the uh, social media. I'm sure other GMs and other executives are laughing like this clown, this amateur. We can show you how to really manipulate <laughs> it in a way that will never come back and, and burn you. And that's again why I say the cover up is going to get him or the, the denial that he had anything to do with this. I think it's going to get him. And, and, and what you guys said, he has damaged his credibility and the d credibility of the franchise. But I'm telling you, he's barely scratched the surface of what's going on pervasively throughout all the media, all of celebrity. Everybody has gone into this fake Twitter world and social media world, and people with money and means are manipulating the truth and the, the perception of them and the perception of others constantly, and they're paying for it. I mean, they're paying real cash but to have it, it done. But it still comes down to a culpability of a franchise-running GM to be able to see it. Because if you have a sports writer could see it, and I can see it as a sports caster that it's a manipulative world, you got to be able to stay away from the loaded gun. That's why I don't go home, drink cocktails, get my pajamas, and tweet. It's not <laughs> in their trouble. You're not doing you that? You can yeah. get yourself fired. You can't get a raise on Twitter. At Buffalo Wild Wings, we'll admit that we often go overboard with our limited time offerings. We just can't help ourselves. Take our new signature sampler. For $15, you get wings and three shareable options like fried pickles or cheese curds. Then there's our aptly named Over the Top Nachos, a literal mountain of crispy tortilla chips loaded with your choice of pulled pork or honey barbecue grilled chicken, corn, jalapenos, and more. Then top it all off with our new Platinum Margarita Go overboard with us today at Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Available for a limited time while supplies last. Please drink responsibly. Now, Joel Embiid was repeatedly targeted by the accounts in question. And the young star addressed the accusations today, saying, quote, I talked to uh, uh, Brian Colangelo. He said he didn't say that. He called me just to deny the story. Got to believe him until proven otherwise. If true, though, that would really be bad. Whitlock should sixer players be angry about this? No, because we must remember the NBA is utopia. There's nothing ever bad happens in the NBA. This is the most beautiful place in the world. Everybody just sing, uh, grabs each other's <laughs> hands and sings Kumbaya. It is utopia. We got to remember the media uh, has told us this. Now, if this were the NFL, and this was an NFL executive attacking black players and the, the general manager in Toronto, of course, this would be a shining example of racism and how terrible the NFL <laughs> is. But since it's the NBA, nothing to see here. And Joel Embiid should probably send this man a brand new car or something to thank him for doing it. Now, first of all, um, I don't think actually, <laughs> That's about as I don't think players as should worry about this. This is different. Okay, I'll, I'll just personalize it. When I come to my show, if my boss was subtweeting, I got a show to fill. Go play. A player's job is to play. Not the, what do we always say? GMs, GM, coaches, coach, players play, refs, ref. You know, the NBA is the only league that's built on worship. The AAU coach recruits you. Gear, please come play. The college coach, please stay for a second year. I know you're leaving. The NBA coach, well, it's a player's league. You can fire me. There's no other sport in America where players constantly, on virtually every call, complain to the ref. Baseball players get thrown out for arguing a call third strike. NFL, they'll throw a flag. Listen, NBA players, you can be a little needy. Play the game. You, gotta, you can't let this 
You cannot <laughs> let this... On a serious note time, for me. Time out. He's criticizing, he's putting out information about injuries. He's Thank really you. Who does he, he, has, he has the... Joel Embiid for going to a concert and dancing on stage. He didn't approach him man to man, be like, hey, man, you've been injured a lot. What's that about? He took shots at him on social media. You don't think that's wrong? You don't think that's wrong to say, oh, Joel Embiid's not the future of our franchise. He's going after Rihanna on social media. Ben Simmons, that's our guy, you know? That, to me, that's, that speaks volumes about the, the president of your franchise. He's too insecure to approach yeah, the but star about players him. worry about that? Yeah, you know, if the guy doesn't have your back but he's blasting you online, how is that a good thing? He, you, you interact with him. He's a part of the organization as you are. Great organizations and, and championship organizations, everybody plays their part, but they're, they're a unit. Like, the guy who's making decisions with the coaching staff and the players, they all interact, they all talk, they all communicate. So as somebody who, who's the gatekeeper of all your secrets or has an opinion that he's not sharing with you, communication is, is, is a big part of being a great organization. LeBron. And if he's not, sh he feels a certain way about you and he's not sharing with you and he's speaking to someone else about it or speaking to the public about it behind your back, that's wrong. Yeah. That's, that's way, something that, that's that, something you, that you would not want to. If, 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 if your boss came and said something to you and, and, and said, you know what, I'm, I'm proud of you, what you're doing on the court, but then goes and tweets about, about your show behind your back and to the, to the world, and, but this, what he said to you wasn't the same thing. You would feel some time to play away. You wouldn't be like, oh, okay, I should just sit I back in my in chair media. and do my job. People backstab me for 30 years. But not it, your boss. He has a responsibility, uh, he has a responsibility to no, lead. No, no, no. Yeah. wrong. I go into negotiations. My boss tells my agent, he's not worth that. My agent says, he is worth that. It's a constant struggle in our business to validate your talent. But that's in private. In private, uh, they have that conversation. If they, had, no, if they no, had it across, it across it Twitter. I can handle this. I can, because I've had bosses backstab me privately, publicly, every kind of way you can possibly do it. And, and this is why I say this guy's only scratched the surface. Almost everything you read now has been bought and paid for. And I've had hit pieces bought and paid for on me by, by my boss. And so I, I, this will not sit well with the players. When you start leaking Okafor is injured and trying to bait reporters into asking Okafor, did you fail the physical? Is that why the trade didn't go through? Or trying to bait uh, the media into asking other questions that would be embarrassing or uncomfortable for the players. A line of trust has been crossed. And so I, it's hard to go back over that line. It'll be hard for players to get beyond that because you can't have a private conversation with Colangelo because, you know, he, he's a guy that you can't be trusted in a private conversation. That's a, that's a great point. Let me ask you, is, that th is this all that different from Dan Gilbert writing a letter, putting his name on it in Comic Sans about LeBron James? LeBron James still came back to Cleveland. He doesn't have a good relationship with, uh, no, Mr. no, Gilbert. what Dan Gilbert did is far more authentic, exactly. honest, yes, that's what easier I'm yeah, for me to get saying. over. He put, his, put name his name on it, put it out there for everybody to see. He's owned it. This is a little sneaky guy behind his back. And again, th that's why <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've dealt with this, where people are saying one thing to you in, in private and then doing something completely different okay, behind your back. Okay, but I mean, listen, back. Phil Jackson ripped Kobe in a book, and they, and they worked it out. Put his name okay, on it. Okay, it doesn't matter... If, if you were married and your wife, you either found out she was cheating and she told you, or you found out and she didn't tell you. Doesn't it, change the act. Yeah, it, I, it I, would, I would have more respect for her. I would have yeah, more respect for her. You still wouldn't want to be with her. Yeah. Changes but, the reaction. Oh, there's a lot of marriages that survive infidelity, Colin. There's going to be kids here. <laughs> Almost every marriage damn near survives infidelity. <laughs> Welcome back, Dante Jones. Back joining us now, Fox NBA analyst Chris Broussard. Let's move to the NBA Finals, where LeBron is about to face off with the Warriors yet again, but people seem just as interested in speculating about where he's going to end up next year. A lot of teams are floating out there, but I've got a source that says LeBron's group believes there is no perfect option for him, including Cleveland with bad contracts. Got me thinking that if he gets rolled in the Finals, and he will, I wouldn't be surprised if LeBron actually chose to sit out next season Michael Jordan retired twice. Phil Jackson left and came back, perusing the best options. Whitlock, you think there's any chance I'm right? Any chance? Yes, I do think there's a chance. I think there's a 15% chance you're right. Uh, and, and I say that because I've seen crazier things happen. Michael Jordan set out for a year and a half, was going to set out two. For baseball. For, to play baseball, and so... 
when I start thinking about has LeBron laid the foundation to where he could do this without taking a lot of heat, yeah, because he just put together an 82-game regular Thank season. Thank you. He played all those minutes. He played at the highest level he's ever played was at. Was great in game sevens. And so I, I th it, clutch now is off the table. So if he were ever going to pivot and say, I'm going to take a, a beat to deal with my kids and family or whatever, this would be the time. So I say there's a 15% He's chance. never talked about fatigue, ever. That's been off the table with LeBron. He has he's about, Superman. He's talked about fatigue. Uh, he publicly he said, now. He said, I'm tired. No, this Nobody's year. more tired no, I'm saying than me. This, this year, year. Okay. he is talking about fatigue constantly. <clears throat> Laying the foundation. out there. I don't like it one bit because this is, this is not Michael Jordan going out on top saying, I have nothing more to prove in basketball. This, according to your mm. theory, is LeBron James saying, there's no perfect fit. I can't get on a team that can compete with Golden State. So I'm leaving. That's not retiring. That's quitting because I can't beat the best team. And if you have designs on being the best player ever or the best player in the world, you don't walk away like that. That's called a sabbatical. No, it, it, it's a sabbatical. Like you said, if you just want to spend time with family, but if it's that perfect option, the best player ever doesn't need the perfect situation. At the second if you're the best, get over the hump By some the way, way. The second best player doesn't need to join a dynasty in the Warriors. But that's what's happening in the league now. This, it's this a would player. Be quitting. This wouldn't if, if that, and I don't think LeBron would do it, but this would be quitting. This wouldn't can, be retiring. Was you, it, is it worse than KD to the Warriors? I can't win. Is it worse than KD? KD's not the KD's, best player. Exactly. KD's, 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 KD's the second best, best player. Huh? He's, he's the third. He's the third best player. Yes, Kawhi Leonard is better than him. However, let's throw this one out the window. Please not discuss this ever again. <laughs> like, like this is this is kind of disrespectful to the man that he is and yeah. this, the the talent that he is, the competitor that he is, to be able to say that he's going to sit and at the top of his game, he's going to sit and take a year off because I can't find the right situation. Let's say you he even had that thought process. Jordan well, did it twice. But, but, but Jordan but, but left Jordan, but, Jordan, but listen, and there's conspiracy That's, theories LeBron's out there. LeBron's not Tom, on top? No. But, but, is he going to win no, the championship? No, no, no. Jordan did it, and there's conspiracy theories that make sense in some compa capacity heard of him. why he left why he left, and why he had to leave. And those, that's, a, that's a different but story. But those theories never hurt his legacy, ever. That's fine, but... You could, he could technically still make $35 million and, so, and say I'm hurt and sit out on a team and say I'm hurt if it doesn't fit the right situation. That would be quitting. Th th time out. He, could say, he could say I'm hurt, but, but sit at home for a year? That man cannot sit at home. He can, he can but, barely take two weeks off from basketball, okay, so sit at home. It would drive him would crazy. Be lying. He LeBron, doesn't have another sport to go to. That would be lying for LeBron to say I'm hurt. But for LeBron to say I'm exhausted. I just got to my eighth then final. Take, then take off preseason. Don't play preseason because I've been in eight There's finals. eight and... preseason games. But, That's not taking But at thing. this point in time, taking a year off at this stage in your life is kind of is, is harder than playing. Here's the thing, too. Look, whenever you retire, whenever LeBron retires, if it's five years from now, whatever, he's still going to be a young man. You need to exhaust your window you have to play professional sports and play. You don't think Michael Jordan wishes he hadn't taken off 94 and 95. I'm not so sure. Wish, it, it, the conspiracy theories aside, you don't think he wishes he hadn't retired <laughs> after that it's, lockout in 99, especially with everybody saying LeBron's going to get him, LeBron's going to I guarantee you Michael Jordan wishes there, he had There are options for back. LeBron to repeat the same thing he did in Miami and make a team like he did in Miami. It's not, it's, it's not that far-fetched to say that he could, you could construct another team around him at this point in time in his career. It's not in a situation where dire strengths, even if you go in Chris Broussard lane and be like, you know what, we're going to Philly, you can, make, you can make that work and you can compete at a high level. You'll be a top yes. four team and you still got the best player in the game. You Here's could go... To, to the West Coast of L.A. and, and create a team and make something work. I'm not 100% with Colin. I'm only 15%. Okay. And I here's why I'm at this 15%, why I think there Anything may be happen. kernel truth with what Colin's saying. The man really only has, because he's going to continue to play basketball. None of us think he can retire and be done. Yeah, I'm not saying he's that. He's only got a small window where he could really devote himself to his young sons. And if the man stood up and said, you know what, guys? I want to take a year for my family, really be involved with my boys year round. I don't think anybody that would be that's that big, wouldn't be quitting. That's different. that would be the modern athlete who makes enough money, a bunch of different places that they can do that for their family 
and could set a whole new. That's, that's a, different. That's a, I think that's everybody would respect life. that. But okay. you saying he would basically quit because there's no perfect option. Well, what I'm saying is, if he said the, the branding of it was what Jason said, and half of it was what I'm saying, what's, it, what's the difference? That's, I agree. You it, just said you, he wouldn't lie. That's a competitor. That's, he's well, not to lie. There's no perfect option. And so if I'm sitting here weighing what I'm going to do but the next that, year. That's from a media I, perspective. That's not a, from a competitor's perspective. A competitor always thinks they have a chance. That's what I'm saying. Y'all say, so, saying he's not a competitor. So, so, no, so from, he, you, from you guys who don't compete on a daily basis, at, at a game, you guys are not playing a game, so you don't think that yeah, you're there's the... no competition there's, between there's, us. There's, 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 there's no strife in thinking that I can always win. Michael Jordan was great because he wanted to win at everything. So as a competitor, and, and LeBron is a competitor, to, to, to LeBron, give up and say LeBron I'm not going to compete... LeBron is a businessman. He's a competitor. He is, so but a competitor a business first. Man his business? does what's best for business. But I playing next year hurts his I business? I think that's wrong. I think, I, I think more than a businessman, and Chris, you can... Le LeBron leads with his heart, man. That's why he went back to Akron. Yes, and that's why he that. spends all that money invested in Akron. He's a hard guy. The guy, guy leads with his heart. He's very in sensitive, in my, and not in a negative way. He's a good, he comes from a good place. Good human. Even the things I disagree with him on, his intentions are yes. good. Yes. And so I can see that man looking at his sons and looking at this career he's built and eight straight finals, and he's played on national teams. And it's like, man, I got to look. I could take a little window here and really get into my boys year round. And, and there is no perfect situation for me here in basketball. And so there may be a perfect team, for option for me by, here by, at home. By that, the way, I, I am, you know, you, you've worked with me enough. Yeah. I'm a driven guy. Why did I leave a company? I left the company because I'm like, ceiling, hit it. New company. That's a business decision. You're a player. LeBron's a businessman. I'm a businessman. No, no, you who brought it? No, LeBron is no, 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 no. I mean, no, but I left, I left a huge offer. Why? Because there was a... I took six weeks off. I was a year out. I was negotiating with here. Why? Because it, it was a business decision. He's an athlete sports. first, exactly. a businessman second. Sports I'm a broadcaster first and a businessman second. But there are times when business supersedes broadcasting. But you wouldn't look differently at LeBron James if he's yeah, thinking... I would destroy him. I, I wouldn't. I, I just can't beat Golden State. No matter who I join, no matter how good the players are, I can't beat Golden State. So let me just take my ball and go home and quit. No, no. Come on. I would not think less of him. That's not a competitor. I don't think that's the I story like your he's theory. Put I out. like yours. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like there's no perfect <laughs> option. You don't like my theory. No, I mean, but but even, even in his rationale, if, if I want to spend time with my boys, I can go to a city where I can spend a year-round commitment with my boys, like I don't where where they can compete. Oh, and I can where go, I can have to move out. them to another school system again. Really? Kids move school systems all the time. I, that's easy all for the you time. to say. But this, I got kids. I, know I, I, I have kids in school, and they've moved school system, and they've become happier with the new school. Like we don't even see, we don't know where his kids are happiest at. We don't know if they're happy in Cleveland. We don't know if they're happy in L.A. He lives in L.A. part time. We don't know his where wife, his family is. I, from what I, I see, his wife's happiest at acting. By, by the way, I Jordan thought, said, "I have nothing more to prove in basketball." He didn't. What's LeBron got to prove? prove? Win more championships. Right. There's more championships to get. We got to go. We got to go. <laughs> we can do more. You know, for a crazy crazy. theory, this <laughs> filled 15 minutes. I, you know, <laughs> let me tell you what was crazy. The, the theory was crazy. But you analogizing yourself to LeBron James is even crazy. <laughs> I did not. You said you're the GOAT. We're joined by Jason McIntyre and Super Bowl champion Greg Jennings. Let's move to President Trump, who's been taking credit for the NFL's recent decision to change his national anthem policy. And according to the Wall Street Journal, he may have a point. In sworn depositions given during the collusion grievance filed by Colin Kaepernick, several owners, including Jerry Jones, Bob McNair, and Stephen Ross, acknowledged that the president's comments on the anthem protest last year had a major influence on how they chose to deal with the issue. Cowherd, are you okay with owners caving to pressure from President Trump? Yeah. Well, why is Facebook changing their uh, privacy policy? Because they're caving to public pressure. Trump created public pressure. Companies change their policies all the time based on, we have legal sports gambling in America. We got networks now creating all new gambling shows they didn't a month ago. Oh, legislation changed. The president, like it or not, that's a bully pulpit. That's the most powerful position in America. 
And if he goes strongly aligning with you or he's negatively defining you, sometimes you have to make moves. I mean, it's the way the world works. I, I completely agree with that, that they should have caved to that public pressure. And I don't care who created it. They needed to do something about their policy because they need to stop this protesting from overtaking the game of football and just conducting business. The other thing I think they're smartly doing here, I got to give them credit, I think that Wall Street Journal points a finger for the players, to the players, blame President Trump, not us. Mm -hmm. It's not the NFL owners that installed this policy. It's President Trump. Be mad at him. And President Trump actually will welcome that. If I'm the bad guy on this and I force these guys to do the right thing in his mind, he'll take credit for that. I think it's a smart move by the NFL to point the blame, make Trump the scapegoat. But I also don't blame him for uh, taking the advice. I'm completely just disturbed by the whole ordeal. Simply, I don't think that the owner should have caved because if I'm a player, that lets me know how you really feel about me. Who's most important? I'm the commodity, but who really is important is the fan, the fan base, the viewers, the spectators. Yeah, I, I, but, but I'm in-house. You know this suit that, th that you're wearing is paid for by the fans. No, this the fans, suit, this suit, this suit is paid for by my hard work. By the fans. No, by no my fans, by no my suits. hard work. It, 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 no, 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 no. No I, fans, I get, no I, suit. I no big house in I Minneapolis. Under, I understand all of that. But my point is, with the owners caving to what Trump did, all it did was di literally divide the league even more. I mean, it, number one, no, no, he, he you completely know why the league shifted. is divided, Greg. No, you know why, he, he completely sh Greg, shifted the Greg, you know the why narrative. the league is divided right now over this issue? Is because the players don't understand the business that they're in. They don't have a business approach. The customer is always right. Your decision should be based on the customer. See, now I disagree with no, that. No, no. Oh, I don't think the customer wait, is always no. right. Whitlock is 1,000% right, guys. The ratings were going down, okay? The advertisers were spooked. The, the, the marketing companies were like, hey, if you guys cover the protests, we're out of here. The business, as he's saying, was going down. They had no choice but to listen to their, uh, the guys who Custom. were paying the no, customer. They, they had a choice. They had a choice, but they decided to to give in to what Trump's narrative well, all okay, of a sudden. Okay, what was the alternative, Greg? Number one, tell Trump to re tell tell the tell, fans, tell your tell customer the, base we don't care what you no have to say. no no explain to your take your your guys side your players side and say look we're supporting the players because if Trump then says look, these players are standing for what they believe. I don't agree with the way they're approaching it. Then it would have been different. But him for, for Trump to just simply say they're attacking our flag, our anthem, and all these that's soldiers. That's the way fans felt. That's no, the way that's, fans felt. It's the way, they, it, it's the the way the fans felt, but had Trump come out and said something different in support of the league, then it would have been, the whole support narrative would have been shifted. But, but no, but I mean, I, let me agree with Greg on this. Um, Here's the thing. This is what the NFL struggles with that the NBA doesn't. Players in the NBA... Why did you? You just poke at me with that. Go, go ahead. <laughs> the NBA is You've been poking me on go that ahead. Belichick story yeah. first. <laughs> so the NBA players, the employees, feel like the owners mostly have our back. What this signals to Greg Point is, listen, not only do we care more about what the president says? Thank you. But we're worried about what a guy in Sheboygan out in the parking lot nine Schlitz beers in before the game thinks. The, those are the yeah, athletes. The beer you need talent. Fans. I need Greg Jennings in my no, league. I need fans. No, no, there's always a line of fans. How many great players are I'm there? I'm not taking fans for granted. I'm not either, but they're not always right. They All booed them. Donovan McNabb getting drafted in I Philadelphia. So what? They're the fans. They get to do that. They spend the money on the jerseys. They watch the games. They I buy like the, the overpriced fans. tickets. Jason. The $12 beers. All I'm Who do you think we answer to right here? Jason. Our bosses. The fans. The fans. They no, dictate the topics. No, you know who runs our business? Subway sandwiches. Advertisers. That's who runs our business. Advertisers also spoke on the Anthem deal as well. Now, that's a better argument, but I, you have to have players. You got to have fans, Colin. And fan, Would and fans go and sit and watch grass? You're telling me, <laughs> as a business owner, the wine store, whatever you own, yeah. the liquor store, whatever, the customers... That's not who you're most worried the about. The customer's not always worried right. about your if somebody employee, walked the into my, the if, so, if a customer walked into my wine store and was abusive to other customers, he's out of the store. <laughs>
My wine's number one. I can't have crappy wine. Well, what if someone is spoiling the wine? Because the fans aren't coming in and destroying the NFL that's product. What, that's what President Trump did. He spoiled everything by shifting the narrative and then oh, turning... Yeah. And he did not... Did he not shift the narrative? Did it was going on the year before, Greg. Did he not change? But it wasn't... If he would have came out and said the player's focus is on social justice and justices, then that would have been what everybody focused on. But he shifted it and made it seem like he these was guys are attacked. on the issue for a year. Greg, you know the, how the media operates. All they showed was players kneeling during the anthem. Absolutely. What did the fans say? Oh my gosh, they're doing that so disrespectful. So they don't want to hear. So they don't want to hear about Jason, the details. So what you're they telling me is if President Trump gets up and supports the, and is in support of the social injustices, this is why we have the issues now because our president feels one way and and he can dictate and say whatever Greg, he wants Greg, Greg. and do whatever okay, he Greg, wants. Great, great. Just understand this: the, the the injustices that everyone's talking about. There's not universal agreement no. on those injustices. So there's two sides. There will never be universal. No, I understand agreement. that. So there were people that said, oh my God, what happened to Michael Brown? Worst thing in the world. There were people on the other side that was like, no, no, no. He put his hand on a policeman's gun. We got video of him in a convenience store beforehand. We don't think, there are people that don't think that was a total injustice. There are people that do. Donald Trump is supporting law enforcement. He's taken that side. And there's a lot of Americans that have taken that side and believe that police killing unarmed black men story is told completely out of context. And so it's not as easy as just, well, Donald Trump should have sided with this and the players because there's a whole big segment of America that would have disagreed with him and it's not authentic to what President Trump believes. Forget Donald Trump siding with the players. Let's throw that out. The owners... You have to you have to support your even if you end up eventually siding with President Trump. Yeah. Show some sign of report to of of of, of they support. They have to, that hundred million dollars. That hundred million dollars to the Players Coalition. That's not a sign of support. I'm gonna tell you what that is. That's a, here so you guys can just shut up. Greg, yeah, a lot of players agree with. Fans it. are forever. Players come and go. It, rotating door every year. New players. Fans stick around forever. Yeah. I would argue there's a huge pool of fans. There's not a huge pool of great football or basketball players. It's very small. This time of year brings us two things, graduations and Father's Day, and the gifts that go along with them. Before you buy dad another tie or that grad a balloon that will probably float away, ask yourself this. Does my dad or grad like wings or sports or better yet, both? If the answer is yes, then get them a Buffalo Wild Wings gift card. Right now, if you purchase $30 worth or more in-store or online, they'll give you a $5 bonus to keep for yourself. That's a gift that gives back. How generous of you. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back, Dante Jones, Chris Broussard are back. Let's move to the association, the finals. Warriors got some bad news officially announcing Iggy. Andre Iguodala will miss one of the NBA finals games. Fifth straight game he's missed with a bone bruise. Iguodala won a finals MVP back in 2015, largely for the job he did on LeBron, although that's a little overstated. LeBron still went crazy. Whitlock, will Iggy's absence have an impact on game one? Absolutely. Absolutely. They are not as smart of a team without Iguodala. Why do you think they had problems with Houston? Th their IQ drops considerably. And then it puts more stress on the one player who can't handle more stress, and that's Kevin Durant, who's, who, whose personality's been leaking oil all season. Not having Iguodala is going to turn LeBron James completely loose on Kevin Durant, both ends of the court, and Kevin Durant will cry. If this is true, if you're right, this is the weakest dynasty ever. Thank you. Can you imagine? Can not. you imagine Ron Harper's out? Michael can't <laughs> beat the the Jazz. Ron Harper's out. Are you kidding? You think me? it wouldn't have had an impact if Ron really? Harper? Really? You gonna disrespect Ron Harper like that? That was a three-headed defensive monster. Thank you, Rodman, Jordan, play that. Bill Jackson, Pippen, Kerr, Horace but, Grant. But Ron played a part in in, in a big part making how that works. They are. As I said before, they are like the Avengers. They are, they are, they are all special in one capacity, but they work well together as a unit, and that's the that's the best part about them. They're a team. I have respect for them because they're a team and they work well together. But Andre is a big part of that team. 
You lose one defender, you lose toughness, you lose an IQ, you, use, you lose a person that makes plays when things go wrong. He's always there for the big rebound, the big putback, energy plays. Like, Andre, the... Andre was big for them when they got LeBron because he starts out LeBron. It's never KD versus LeBron. KD doesn't take on the whole challenge. It's, it's KD, then comes Andre, Sean Livingston might get some, Clay might get some, and they rotate to wear the man down and make him do different things on the defensive wow. also. If that's system. true, but you lose KD. one defender. So, what makes them special, they have multiple defenders. So now they win by 24 instead of 34. I mean, come on, look, I, I get what you guys are saying. Andre Iguodala is a great role player. He's important to that team. They're not as good without him. But, please, are we really going to feel sorry for this team? How many Hall of Famers they still got? Four. <laughs> First of How all, many LeBron got? He's not just a role player. Let me he's just a role player yeah. for role them player. to make them better. Okay. That's a big that's a big difference in being a role player. I'm a role player. Now, no, I'm not right Andre now, Iguodala. He's a role player. He's older in his career. He's not the Andre Iguodala he was in Philadelphia. Even he's a Denver. finals MVP. Two years ago. But he, he, either and or I, he I played his role the best way. Chris. Should have been Steph. Chris. <laughs> they just beat a team that missed 27 straight three-pointers by nine points. Chris Paul didn't play. They missed 27 straight, seven of 45 from three or something like straight. that. Yeah, 27 straight, and only beat him by nine. But LeBron James is going to show up, no Iguodala, and nothing's going to happen. Because Noth it's just LeBron James. His second leading score is out, too, Kevin Love. We'll see if he plays. And that second leading score only gave him 13 points and a I, night. And I think they are better suited now to play Golden State right now with Kevin Love not playing game one and possibly coming off the bench because he gives you a different dynamic coming off the bench. When we won games to, to beat them, K-Love wasn't, wasn't starting. I agree and you, with you. And you me. had a more athletic unit out there, so then when you brought him in, he could attack the second units, and he could play a role. He, he, he was, in that series, he's not a role player, but in that series, he was a role player. He did the dirty work. He rebounded. He had an effect on the game like Andre Iguodala did, and that made our team better. You can adjust your lineups to make people better. Andre Iguodala, by no means, is a role player. He just does things different. Statistically, his impact doesn't show up. He does, he makes the plays to make winning basketball happen. Yeah, they struggle. But, he, but they got Draymond too. Draymond does exactly what Draymond you're Draymond can't throw it in the ocean right now. And Iguodala's a great shooter. But he knocks shots down. Man, look, this is finally, you know, them getting a little bit of what they've been benefiting from. Because Kevin years. Love and Kyrie Irving were out in 2015. DeMarcus Cousins was out this year. Uh, Chris Paul was out for game six and seven. I am not in any way, shape, or form going to feel sorry at all. Oh, no, not feel sorry for him. No, 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 sorry. I'm not giving him nothing. You're no. telling me that this doesn't put more stress on Kevin Durant. Uh, if you're going to be the, the second best exactly. basketball player in the world, deal with it. How about the stress Good on LeBron Lord. James? You got a guard and now. I look, I got a guard James now. is built for stress. Kevin Durant isn't. That's the issue, and that's why this extra pressure on Durant will show up in this series without equal dollar. Look, I, I get what you're saying, uh, Dante, because they they are built more to play against Golden State without love. I would believe that if I could count on Jeff Green to give me the 19 points he gave me. But not I can't count on any of them. What makes to them do anything special other than is that they have multiple defenders, multiple long wing defenders. That's Cleveland? why. No, no, Golden State. That's why Boston gave him a little bit, get LeBron a tricky situation because they have multiple wing defenders that can come in and wear them down. They couldn't wear them down with theirs, but but Golden State has better athletic long wing defenders and now they don't have one of the possibly three to go against and that's Draymond and KD's responsibility you know, you know and I wouldn't like? I wouldn't leave it I wouldn't leave it up Golden to State. A... this is just how great LeBron is yes that literally we're talking about a guy that averaged six a game if LeBron's not in this series <laughs> but he doesn't he, mean anything he averaged six he got an MVP because he played well in the offensive end and helped but, stay by the LeBron him, Dante, by the way. you know that but it's, way, hard, it's, it's harder to knock shots down Andre, when somebody's not guarding Andre you fellas Iguodalo it's a lot of pressure on those Andre shots Andre Iguodala won an MVP in the finals by holding LeBron to 34 and a half Thank a game you. that's how Colin, great he is Colin, Colin, and Colin. what happened Colin Chris <laughs> who had the best plus minus in last year's NBA Finals I have by a mile, who? Andre Iguodala. Thank you. But he doesn't matter. He doesn't Hold matter. On. Just okay. last Hold year, on. he had the best plus minus by, by 20 points over just Jerry Andre. Just because he doesn't take shots. Shot. Okay, you, you're saying the main thing is that he's not going to be able to help out on LeBron. Okay, so say LeBron goes for 42 and a triple-double. So what? 
Because what's Kyle Corver going to do? What's J.R. Smith going to do? What's Jeff Green? Okay. It does, if, if they we, are so outmanned, it doesn't even matter. I'll give you this. They were a good playoff team until two things happened. Andre Iguodala came to their team and took a supporting role, and Draymond wasn't starting in the starting lineup. And Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr coaching, but they took a turn defensively. They're elite defensively. That's what they hang their hat on. They're elite defensively when Andre Godala got on the team and said, you know, I'll do whatever it Wait, takes you, to win basketball games. And Draymond, Jackson, got, and Draymond Green came They're in there. They weren't number one. They're they weren't number one. defensively, right? Although Steph Curry is a below average defender and Kevin Durant for 6'11 can't protect the rim. Let's not make them the 95 Bulls defensively. They ain't that great that defensively. That sounds like an argument in favor of Andre Iguodala being important. No, but don't tell me how great. In 50 years at a bar, we're going to be saying, it was the best shooting team ever. Nobody's going to be saying, you know, with Iguodala, that was the best defensive team because, ever. Because yeah. we only speak about the things that go on the, on, 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 on the board. If we only speak about points. One, we don't, we, they're we'll great scoring, but they're Andre great defensively, Iguodala. too. When, when yeah. they win it, they, if they great. lose game one, we'll be talking about Iggy's <laughs> impact. In one. the they're, pecking order. If you, which, what is he his importance to the Golden State Warriors? Fifth. Okay. So we're talking about them losing the fifth most important player on their team. LeBron James lost the second most important player on his team. Kevin Love. That's like going to a steakhouse and saying, you know, it was a great night. I didn't like the bread. Yes, thank I, you. Bread really, is for, very for this important. matchup, he's important. Oh, bread, you can get a good steak anywhere. Bread, on the other hand, not <laughs> all restaurants are good with that. And look, Capital Grill, I love it. They got great okay, calamari. How come we made a bet? We didn't make it to go to Panera Bread. <laughs> We're going to a steakhouse. That has excellent bread. <laughs> come on. I Welcome back. Time for last call. Let's move to Kobe Bryant, whose busy retirement doesn't appear to be slowing down with Kobe announcing he's got a new book coming out this fall entitled The Mamba Mentality, How I Play. Kyle Hurd, you're going to read Kobe's new book. Depends on what's in it. Uh, if it's a self-help book, not interested. But if he delves deep into real struggles, certain players can go really authentic, then I think it would be fascinating. But if he just says, here's how to be good, learn how to hit a fall away, I'm not interested. You're not, you don't need any Mamba mentality in your life? <laughs> Ann wouldn't appreciate that. You bring a little mamba mentality. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I don't know. I don't even know what mamba mentality is. And that's why you should read the book, so you can learn what a mamba mentality, the best. He's the best. He's the greatest. Uh, Jordan imitator we've ever seen. All right, to Philadelphia, <laughs> where Brian Colangelo isn't the only Sixer breaking news today, with uh, Page Six reporting that Ben Simmons has been dating Kendall Jenner for the last few weeks. Cowherd, do you think this will last? What, till June? I mean, what do you mean? Like, last, like, how long? I don't, it, they could be married. Ben oh, Simmons God. and Kendall Jenner, why not? Why not? <laughs> They're going to be married? She's had plenty of practice dating NBA players. Practice makes perfect. I'm going to tell you something. This concerns me more than Joel Embiid's injuries and Brian Colangelo's tweets. This scares me. Why? It's I want Kendall my Jenner. players focused. I want them focused. He's found a wonderful young lady who has, you know, had plenty of practice dating NBA players. Her family knows how to do it. This is a wonderful couple. Forever. <laughs>